Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International with me, Keith Johnston. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa sent a cable of congratulations to the Mayor of Kuwait, His Highness Sheikh Suba Al Ahmed Al Jabba Al Suba, on His Highness's 13th accession anniversary. In the cable, His Majesty wished the Mayor lasting good health and happiness and the brotherly Kuwaiti people further advancement and prosperity under His Highness's leadership. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, sent a cable of congratulations to the Mayor of Kuwait. His Highness Sheikh Suba Al Ahmed Al Jabba Al Suba on His Highness's 13th accession anniversary. In the cable, His Royal Highness the Premier he had the Kuwaiti Emir's capable leadership in boosting his country's development and growth in all fields, wishing him lasting good health and happiness, and the Kuwaiti people further elevation and prosperity under His Highness's leadership. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister also hailed the deep rooted fraternal ties and amical bonds between the two countries and peoples. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, in the cable His Majesty wished the mere lasting good health and happiness and the brotherly people of Kuwait further elevation and prosperity under His Highness's leadership. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, delivered a statement after the Representatives Council approved the Government Action Plan for the next four years. His Royal Highness praised the approval of the Council, which will lead to achieve the joint aspirations between executive and legislative authorities to achieve further progress and prosperity and meet the needs of the citizens under the vision of His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa. He added that the Government and Parliamentary Agreement regarding the Government Action Plan embodies a strong cooperation between the executive and legislative authorities and the joint efforts to achieve further progress and overcome challenges. His Royal Highness expressed thanks and appreciation to the Speaker of the Representatives Council, Fazia Senal, for approving the plan, which reflects the keenness to benefit the people of Bahrain. He also praised the efforts of the Government for its cooperation with the Council in approving the Government Action Plan. He affirmed that the cooperation with the Legislative Authority pushes the wheel of development forward in order to achieve further accomplishments. His Royal Highness pointed out the economic and global challenges currently faced and stressed the need for stronger unity to overcome these challenges and maintain the gains of the Kingdom. He added that the aim of these efforts is to provide high living standards for citizens and achieve further progress for the Kingdom and its people. His Royal Highness renewed the importance of enhancing cooperation between the two authorities and affirmed the government's keenness to follow up on all proposals for the representatives and surer councils. He stressed the government's keenness to meet the needs of the citizens and achieve more gains in order to achieve further progress and prosperity in the Kingdom. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, sent a cable of congratulations to the Mayor of Kuwait, His Highness Sheikh Suba Al Ahmed Al Jabba Al Suba, on His Highness's 13th Ascension Anniversary. In the cable, His Royal Highness the Crown Prince wished the Mayor lasting good health and happiness and the Kuwaiti people further progress and prosperity under His Highness's leadership. The first Deputy President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, Chairman of the Bahrain Athletics Federation and Honorary President of the KHK MMA, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, received at Al Wadi Palace the Philippine Ambassador to Bahrain, Alfonso Ferdinand Ver. His Highness Sheikh Khalid discussed with the Ambassador means of enhancing bilateral cooperation on the sports level, especially in the mixed martial arts sports, which will contribute to the spread of this sport in Asia. His Highness also reviewed the success achieved by the Brie of competitions, highlighting the Bahraini experience in hosting and organising this event. Sheikh Khalid hailed the steps taken by the Philippines in supporting athletes to exercising this sport, which was evident by the emergence of players that compete on the international level. For his part, Ambassador Fer affirmed that his country continuously seeks ways of bolstering relations with the Kingdom of Bahrain, lauding the efforts exerted by His Highness Sheikh Khalid in supporting sports and backing the youth sector. Ambassador Fer wished Bahrain and its people further development and advancement under the leadership of His Majesty the King. National Guard Commander General Sheikh Mohammed bin Isa Al Khalifa received in his office at Sakia Camp today the UAE Ambassador to Bahrain, Sheikh Sultan bin Hamdan bin Zayed Al Nayan. 
He stressed strong fraternal relations between both countries and the leadership's keenness to bolster bilateral cooperation for the common interests of both countries. He also lauded the role of the UAE ambassador in boosting bilateral ties at all levels. Both sides discussed issues of common interest. Shura Council Chairman Ali bin Saleh Asale underscored the government's work programme, which was approved today by the Representatives Council, to be the basis for new plans and programmes that aim for attaining further achievements in the political, financial and social sectors in order to provide a high living standard for citizens. For this occasion, Al Saleh extended his sincere congratulations to His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, his Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa and the Representative Council Speaker Fazia bin Abdullah Zainal and its members as well as the Bahraini citizens. Asali also affirmed that the Shura Council will work to strengthen legislation that will enhance the defence system and contribute to the society's safety and security as well as activating the legislation and initiatives to support family stability and achieve gender balance. Survey and Land Registration Bureau President and Real Estate Regulatory Authority Chairman Sheikh Salman bin Abdullah Al Khalifa announced the launch of the first of its kind insurance policy. Sheikh Salman noted that the insurance policy would be launched by Swiss Re Insurance Company and affirmed that the policy will increase the trust in the new regulatory environment for the real estate sector. He asserted that this procedure will provide protection for buyers and investors and will guarantee the rights of all parties as well as enhance the financing of real estate developers and the effectiveness of the number of institutions. After the insurance policy launch, project developers will have to sell on the map to satisfy the new regulatory requirements by choosing to deposit the funds into the project's escrow account or provide bank guarantee or through the insurance policy on the escrow account. Under the patronage of the Minister of Interior, Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, the 13th American Society of Safety Professionals meeting was opened yesterday in the presence of the Minister of Oil. The Minister of Industry and Commerce, Ministry's Under Secretary for Passports, Nationality and Residence, Chief of Public Security, Capital Governor and Customs President. The event tackles a number of challenges through 16 workshops, covering safety with a participation of 35 speakers and 1,500 participants. The Interior Minister said the event is an opportunity to cope with the development in the field of safety and working environment, as well as exchange expertise. He affirmed the importance of achieving general safety in order to increase awareness in the field of safety and security. The President of the Society, Orixio Mendina, highlighted the main goals and activities of the Society, while Head of the Society in the Middle East, Engineer Hossam al Din Al Khalidi, highlighted the accomplishments and contributions of the Society and the good ties it shares with ministries government organisations and the private sector in Bahrain. The head of the conference, engineer Ali Gobari, welcomed the Interior Ministries and the guests highlighting the importance of the conference in promoting occupational safety in the Middle East. Safety and Industrial Security Executive Director from Saudi Aramco, engineer Ali Azarani, highlighted that safety isn't limited to the industry sector but is a community value that reflects on all walks in life. After the opening ceremony, the Interior Ministry honoured its organisers, hailing the dedication to hold the conference in Bahrain that continues to encourage safety-related events for being a key success factor for the development projects and programmes. He toured the exhibition and learnt about the latest safety, health and environment technologies.
The Minister of Interior, General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, witnessed today a celebration organised by Customs Affairs on the occasion of World Customs Day 2019. In the presence of the Ministry's Under Secretary for Passports, Nationality and Residency, Chief of Public Security and senior officials. The Minister expressed appreciation to the efforts of the Customs for coping with the technology developments and challenges. He affirmed that Customs is one of the main secure lines in the security system and praised the development in the level of performance and benefiting from the experience of others. It is noteworthy that among the development procedures taken by the Customs Affairs in the recent period, the reduction of the number of attachments to the Customs Declaration, the launch of sophisticated radiographic system, the completion of requirements for the application of VAT, the application of the system of pre-clearance procedures, the approved economic operator and electronic payment system all contribute to facilitating the movement of passengers, developing trade and supporting economic growth in line with the requirements of the Customer Affairs Strategy for the years 2010 to 2017 and translating Bahrain Economic Vision 2030. President of Customs Affairs delivered a speech in which he thanks an appreciation to the Interior Minister for his continuous support. He affirmed that Customs plays a vital role in facilitating commercial and travel needs through simplifying procedure. He reviewed the five criteria included in the logo of the World Customs Day 2019, safe, measurable mechanism based on risk and technology, as well as the number of achievements made by the Customs Affairs during 2018, including the re-election of Bahrain as Vice President of Customs Organisation in the Middle East and North Africa for a third time in a row, which confirms Bahrain's high profile in international forums and that the Customs has made active contribution to the World Customs Organisation strategy. The Interior Minister then honoured a number of bodies related to Customs Affairs, in addition to a number of officers and non-commissioned officers. He praised the efforts and wished them all success in assuming their national duty. The Minister then inaugurated the Customs Day 2019 exhibition that was held on the sideline of the event, which included the top achievements made by the Customs Affairs in facilitating the movement of trade and active mechanism for the exchange of information in advance in terms of goods and traffic in order to activate the strategy of Customs Affairs through a number of advanced programmes and projects. The Minister praised the achievements made in the framework of strengthening the security and economic role of the Customs Affairs. The National Bureau for Revenue held a workshop on the treatment of VAT in the construction sector during which all the sector's VAT inquiries were addressed in order to ensure effective implementation of VAT. The NBR outlined the VAT treatment of all the goods and services in the construction sector, emphasising that certain goods and services supplied are not subject to the 5% VAT. The workshop attracted 146 representatives from 75 registered construction companies and is part of an extensive series of workshops that the MBR continues to hold to enhance transparency and raise private and public stakeholders VAT awareness, particularly in regards to the VAT procedures and legal framework. The NBR noted that the VAT is a joint responsibility that requires constructive strategic cooperation among the government, investors and the community. The Department of Consumer Protection at the Ministry of Industry, Trade and Tourism included a number of shops and commercial markets added the exemption logo to goods that are not included in VAT. This comes within the call of the National Bureau for Revenue for all stores and registered establishments. The department emphasised that the private sector is a key partner in raising awareness of value-added tax as it deals directly with the consumer, which will contribute to the proper application of VAT as provided by the Consumer Protection Law No. 35 for the year 2012 and its executive regulations. <laughs> 